our, here's what we're gonna work on tonight, but I'm gonna show you really quick how to create this background texture using the Venetian plaster and some acrylic paint and a palette knife, just a little palette knife. Uh-oh, I'm upside down frozen. Hopefully that'll straighten out. So here's something I wanted to show you too. I don't know if you can see inside my little buckets. Prosecco Maria, congrats, sister. Congrats, hello, Donna. So I always, once my bucket of plaster starts getting um, more than half empty, I always take like a plastic bag and you don't want, you, don't, you want to flip it inside out. You don't want the print from the bag on your plaster, but take your bag and push it down into the top layer of the plaster so that it stays fresh once it gets down to the nitty gritty, once it gets down to the bottom. That'll keep that last bit of plaster from drying up and then you're sad because you lost a half, a quarter of a gallon of plaster. So anyway, um, so this is our goal and I'm gonna push this aside and I'm gonna real quick show you how to get there. It won't be the exact same color. Let me get this bugs off. And we're going to use, our palette knife is in here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just apply the Venetian plaster. And I'm gonna use a little bit of a larger palette knife so it goes faster and uh, doesn't dry out on me too fast. So I'm gonna get something a little bit bigger. Let me put that over there. Ugh. So I'm just gonna divvy out a good bit and then I'm just gonna start spreading it like butter. I'm gonna spread it like butter. You do want it to have a little texture and you do want it to have some dimension. So don't try to make it perfectly smooth. You want it to have some texture to it. So I'm just gonna start spreading it around. I'll make sure my sides are nice and clear, clean. And I'll show you how nice and textured it is in just a second. So that's all it's gonna take. So I'm gonna smear it. I'm gonna butter my bread, the entire canvas. Just get it on. And you want it to still be wet when you're done. That's why we're kind of going fast so that your paints blend nicely into your wet plaster. Okay, so now I'm just gonna kind of go left to right to make sure my texture is kind of horizontal. Not that it matters, it's just my preference. And I'm gonna see if you guys can see the texture. Can you see that texture? So it's not smooth in the slightest. You want it to have some movement and texture to it. Can you see that? Give me some hearts if you can. I'm gonna cover this back up because we are low, low, low. Hey, Sharon. We're low on the Venetian plaster and I don't want to lose what little bit I have left. So let me make sure and cover that back up. Yay, awesome. So yeah, trying to make it super smooth is gonna take longer and then you're gonna have dry spots on the surface of your plaster. So just get it on, move it vertically or horizontally and uh, keep going. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I have a couple of colors over here of blue and I can't decide which one I'm gonna use. This one is Americana Turquoise. I'm gonna squirt a little bit on my palette. And this one is Americana Desert Turquoise. It's a little bit uh, warmer color. Hey, Tanya, hey, Amy, hey, Patsy, hey, Jeannie. So we'll just add a little bit of that and you can kind of see the difference in the two colors. One is just a little bit of a warmer color. So we may use them both. And of course, I'm gonna add some white. Gotta have the white. All right. So I'm gonna use that same palette knife that I used to apply my plaster. I'm just gonna wipe some of the excess off. And 
I am going to start with, I think I'm going to start with the um, warmer color. That is the Desert Turquoise. And I'm just going to pat my, my palette knife into that paint, okay? Just dab it in on the back side. You, then you have just that back side covered. And I am going to just move my, I'm, I'm literally just barely touching the surface, okay? So you're just going to move that plaster back and forth, just barely touching your surface. All right, I'm gonna wipe off that excess. My palette knife is bent. I'm gonna get a different one. I'm gonna get something that's straight. That's better. Now I'm gonna go into my white and do the same thing. I'm just gonna pat some of the white on the back side of my knife. See, we're gonna come back over and do the same thing Hey, I'm now seeing it's so warm up here right now that my the top layer of my plaster already wants to dry. It's already like trying to uh, drag. So I got to move fast because it's warm up here because the heat is blaring. So I'm going to go into that regular turquoise. We'll add a little bit of that in. See how it's dragging? I want to show you this close up. Can you see on this edge how it's creating how it's creating kind of a drag? That's because the top surface of my plaster is trying to dry because it's hot as all get out in this room. So maybe I wasn't having a hot flash. Maybe it's just hot in this room. So I'm going to add a little more white. and just kind of tickle it on your surface. Don't dig through. And that kind of creates a multi-layer, kind of multi-dimensional color. It's dragging down here too. And I'm just adding a little down here. So basically, uh, that's all there is to it. You're going to, um, yeah, you can mist to re-wet 100%. I'll show you that. So you can just take a mister and hit the top of your, and it's not really gonna keep the plaster from drying. What it does is creates a level of moisture or a layer of moisture on top so it doesn't drag, so it doesn't drag that plaster. Let me add a little bit of this warmer color and kind of show you. So it just kind of makes it slick and allows you to add a little more color where you want it. So, yes, you can totally mist. All right, so that's kind of our background. That is how we got started on this piece, which is what we are going to be working on tonight, okay? So it's the same method. Um, white plaster on top, and you can see, I don't know if you can see the crackle, but when we're done, uh, and with the resin, it'll show better, and I will show you a close-up of that so you can see the crackle. But that's what we did, Venetian plaster, add whatever colors you want, and uh, let it dry. Yes, it will work on wood canvas, Emily. So we're gonna set this aside so we don't make a mess. Ugh. And, we're gonna work on this canvas. So basically, that's all the painting we're gonna do. Yeah, Mary, these are my favorite colors too. I'm a beach girl at heart. I think I was um, a mermaid at one point in my life. <laughs> Drink them if you got them. So uh, this is all the painting we're gonna do to this. Once your piece is dry, if you feel like you need to add more color, you can certainly do that. And I wouldn't add more Venetian plaster or more modeling paste. I would just add like some of the white uh, acrylic paints or the blue acrylic paints, whatever you want, and just add that color back in where you want it, let it dry. But this is it. This is what we're doing right here. So, I actually have, 
some, I brought a bunch of glass because I couldn't decide. Uh, it's a 10 by 10, Betty. I couldn't decide if I wanted like to put a sailboat on here and then do a bunch of different glass or if I just want to do glass. So I'm going to start with just doing a fun, crazy, wild array of glass. And then if we decide at that point that we want to add a sailboat, then we shall do just that. So I'm going to start with, I have clear, which is the clear classic. It's actually got kind of an aqua tint to it. And I brought Caribbean blue, which is a nice fun color. And I brought a little bit of Azuria. This is all the Azuria I have left to my name and it makes me sad. So we may be using the last little bits of that. I have Pacific Blue. Not yet, I wish I did, Rima. Post Office hates me, or UPS, or whoever. We just started getting mail service uh, today from uh, the snowstorm we had. So, um, there's that. So, you know, it's just on delay. So, uh, also what I have is the Solex Reflective, which is kind of a green color and i have some of this blue that i got from michael's i don't think they even sell that anymore so if you have some of this it's like it's like gold good for you susan i don't know why i'm not getting mine my you my post office well it's actually probably amazon if you want to know the truth and uh, i just don't have it yet hmm. and i ordered it that very day the very day that we did that uh, piece using the rose gold. I went downstairs and ordered. Okay, so I also have a tiny amount of gold, probably about three quarters of a pound. We may throw some of that in. And we may throw in a little bit of who knows what. I have all kinds of things surrounding me. So we shall see, hello Steve. We shall see what happens. So I'm just gonna start adding um, some glass. <laughs> Everybody say hey to Steve. I'm gonna start adding some glass and then we will uh, decide if we want to add a sailboat or not. I have a whole box of uh, sailboat parts so that I did when I broke a vase probably two or three years ago. I just cut out little sailboat shapes. And uh, so if we decide to add a sailboat, we'll do that as well. But if we're not going to make that commitment right now, we will decide that when we decide to decide. <laughs> I can't find, sorry, I know I'm sounding like a crazy person, but I can't find my last little box of nuggets. And it's kind of making, it's hurting my feelings. Hurting my feelings. Okay, so we're just gonna move on. My feelings are just gonna have to be hurt. I don't know where it is. Don't you hate it? When you're in your space and you're and you can't find something and you're like, I know, I put it right here. Where did it go? Hello, la madre. So everybody say hello to mama. Mama's in the house. So I'm just gonna start with a little bit of clear down here on the lower level where there is. Um, actually, I'm gonna scoot it up onto that blue. I was gonna put it down here in the white, but I'm gonna leave it on that blue. And then I'm gonna come in and I'm just doing this random there's no like no, there's no reason for the order I'm going in or the glass I'm using I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants so I'm gonna add some of this blue this is Caribbean I don't like that piece okay I'm still looking around me trying to find my nuggets so Now, I'm just adding glass. <laughs> Hello, mama. And I think now I'll add a little bit of this Pacific Blue. It's a little bit bigger. And I may... That little teeny bit of Azuria I have left. 
Makes me sad to use it, but there is not enough in here to worry about anything else, is there? It's like a handful, so we'll just bling that in. And then we'll clear. Are y'all having trouble staying connected? Because uh, I keep seeing the same people. When sometimes if we're friends on Facebook, um, it'll tell me that you're here. And I keep seeing the same people log off and on, off and on. So is it throwing y'all off or is Facebook just crazy today? Marcy, I sell my glass. It's artshattered.com. So you can find glass there. Artshattered.com. Oh, I found it. I found it. So I'm not crazy after all. I am having another hot flash though. I know, me too. I, I miss the beach no matter what I'm doing. I actually think, okay, good. So maybe it's just Facebook being Facebook. I know, adding a little gold, that is not uh, something maybe I would normally do, but I'm gonna do it anyway because I want to. <laughs> I like gold. Um, Azuria has been out of stock for like a year. I don't know what the deal is. Ever since the COVID, the, the mama, Gretchen wants to know who mama is. Mama is my mama. It's Margie McCuller, and it says she's watching. I don't know if she is or not. Facebook's telling me she's here, so I don't know. So I do like that little splash of gold. Thank you, Marcy, I appreciate that. So let's see, add a little more clear. Do we want a sailboat? Sailboats, yay or nay? How about this? Out of stock forever. I hope not because that's one of my favorite colors and it makes me sad. They have released a replacement color, but it's not, it's just not the same. Just don't have the feel good that the Azuria has. So, okay. So now what I'm gonna do, I think I'm good with those colors. Now what I'm gonna do, I have a tiny amount of glass chips, which I'm also having struggles finding. Actually, I think I'm gonna add a few of these little Michaels things in. The glass chips, um, um, I'm having trouble finding. These are teeny tiny little glass bits that I bought at Michaels. They know it was on clearance, they don't sell it anymore. So I'm sorry, you can't find it. I think all this stuff's made in China, so. Anyway, the, my glass guy, my the guy I buy all the glass chips from has, um, he, he's obviously, he's either, I don't know what's happened to him, but he's not doing as much uh, glass blowing, probably the COVID, his store might be shut down, something like that. So I'm having a hard time getting uh, these little glass bits from him. But I do have like, I don't know, a small bowl. So I'm gonna try to throw in, and this is what I'm talking about. I'll show you these close up. I'm gonna throw in a couple of those because I love the little surprise element of these pieces, especially these really colorful ones. So I'm gonna show you these close up. Look how pretty. But uh, hopefully, Michaels has glass chips again. Yay! And uh, hopefully, I'll get these back in stock again sometime before my life is over. <laughs> Mama Steve wants to know if you're drinking your Pepsis. Okay, so I'm just going to add a few of these in. I love this one. Look how it's got almost all those same colors in it. It is so pretty. Yeah, that one, it does look like a tiny little boat, doesn't it? So I'm gonna add in a few of these little nuggets here and there. That one's too big. That one's great. Maybe, I don't want them to be the same number. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. <laughs> I'm such a weirdo. So just a few little surprise elements, and once we resin that, I'll show you those close up. They're so pretty. They really pop with the resin. 
So let's check out our sailboats and see if we're gonna add one. So these are pre-cut from vase. So normally what I do when I get a, um, a vase like on clearance at uh, Hobby Lobby or Michaels or from the, um, look at that, from uh, Goodwill or something, I'll just bust it and then pick out a bunch of triangle shapes for um, sailboats. See, so yeah, I'm having a hard time talking and looking at my stuff. <laughs> so this is a cute little piece, but I kinda, yeah, I don't know if that's too big or not. So we're going to check out a couple of others that I have. I know that one's too big. That one's massive. Look how big this one is. This one is a massive. Look at that. That's way too big. Is that way too big? It's pretty big. So, what do you think? Is that too big for this piece? It's a little monster. Those are babies. Wouldn't that be fun? Oh my gosh, and I have pieces of driftwood, Teresa, and uh, they're at my studio now, which uh, I can't work at yet because the heat went out during the snowstorm. So, <laughs> she sure has, Judy. My mom has drank Pepsi her whole life. As a matter of fact, growing up, she made us drink Coke so we wouldn't drink her Pepsi. <laughs> okay, so the small one, this one's too big. I kind of thought so too, but you know, you never know. So, let me put this back in the bag. Let's see what else we have. So hard deciding. See, that's too wiggly. Decisions, decisions. Now I'm looking around to see if I have a piece of driftwood handy dandy. Wouldn't that be super fun? That's what happens when you're in two places. Let's see. I think we're gonna use just the one and we'll just off center it. We won't put it dead center, we'll make it off center. So this is gonna be our boat. And I'm gonna tuck it into the glass a little bit so it's in the water. Becky's drinking Pepsi too. I like the big one too, I just can't decide. I can't decide. It's a lot, it's big. Makes a statement though, doesn't it? Mom, are you still here? Are you fading in and out? Let me clean this real quick. Now water and resin don't mix, so make sure you dry that off, right? We're gonna do the big one. <gasps> Definitely makes a statement. So let's, let's do the big one. And let's find, let's find us a boat to go with it. Yeah, I kind of like it. I was kind of leaning towards it, but you know, sometimes uh, I should listen to other people. So let's find a boat. Oh, look, is that big enough? I think it is. We're gonna tuck that in. Look. I'm digging this, what do you think? And we'll pick that up and we'll put some glass underneath it too. It's kind of dirty. Let me see if I can clean that up a little bit. Yeah, we're gonna add, oh, mom. <laughs> oh, mom said smaller one, but she took too long, didn't she? Okay, so I'm gonna put these away. So this is a good idea for all you guys who are uh, making pretties like this all the time, is when you bust up a vase, go ahead and pull out any of those triangular shaped pieces that you can use maybe later on for sailboats, so that when you want to do a sailboat, you don't have to worry about, you know, whether you have a piece for a sailboat or not. So this one, oh look, 
I might have to change this. Look at that big old piece too. Hang on, I think I found a better sale. Oh yeah, we're moving, we're changing that out. <laughs> yeah, I done lost my mind. That's how it works when you're an artist. Yes. We're going for it. We are going for it. All right? It's a statement piece now. Okay, so we're going to add these once we resin, and uh, then we'll put uh, resin on both sides of this. And uh, so we're going to leave it off for now, both these little pieces. Let me clean this up a little. Let me see. So before I do that, I'm going to put my little blocks underneath my canvas. Guys, I'm about a week away from being full force, 100% in my new studio. Thank goodness it's been like, uh, what, three months coming and between uh, my hip and COVID and snowstorms. I haven't been able to get in and I haven't been able to, oh gosh, haven't been able to get stuff moved, but every about 90% of my stuff is moved over and I'm super excited about being over there full time because I just work better if I go to work. <laughs> I'm that girl. I need to go to work. Um, yeah, we're going to do, um, some seagulls, I think, if I can find some white glass, uh, once we get our resin on. So, um, I actually see some white glass on the other side of the room. So, what we're going to do first is add resin, okay? So, I'm going to grab my gloves. And this is what I use just from Harbor Freight. They're nitrile gloves. And I think I'm going to mix... Not a lot, maybe um, I'm gonna mix four ounces. I don't think we're gonna need four ounces, but I've got some other stuff that needs some resin too. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix four and then I'll let you know once we do it, how much exactly we use. So you'll know that, won't be a surprise. Uh, Shannon, my studio was in Hernando, Mississippi. Cheers. Hernando, Mississippi on the square. So I'm really excited about um, being there. I'm trying to find, before I pour the resin, I'm gonna grab a little piece of white glass. Give me one second. I was not prepared for seagulls. I've decided I probably should nip those seagulls before uh, resin so I didn't get garbage in my piece. Okay, so to make seagulls, I have this tiny little piece of glass. It is from uh, a 12 by 12 sheet, and this is just a little nugget from that. It basically looks like this, and I buy these sheets at... Hobby Lobby, you can also buy them at Bullseye Glass, but they're just a 12 by 12 sheet of mosaic glass. And this is basically what's left of the um, sheet. So I am going to put that there and I'm gonna nip off some tiny, teeny tiny little pieces using these wheeled nippers. So, I'm just gonna nip off a few pieces that we may be able to use as a seagull or two. A couple of birds. And you want them little. You don't want them too big. You don't want them bigger than your boat. Shannon lives in Biloxi. Did y'all get bad weather in Biloxi? Bust this one off a little. Okay, so these are teeny tiny little uh, nips.
from that little white sheet and we'll make a couple of seagulls out of those. So I'm gonna just set those there. We'll move this aside, put all the things away. And I'm gonna scoot this towards me just a little. Actually, I'm gonna leave it there so I can mix. Resin. So I have a cup to mix in. I am gonna mix in one cup but what I want you to do if you've never poured resin is mix in two, okay? You're gonna pour one part in one cup, one part in the other, combine them together and mix, mix, mix. Um, because uh, it's an exact science, you want your measurements to be exact and you don't wanna make a mess and the best way to ensure that is two cups, okay? So I'm gonna make four ounces that's gonna be way more than what I need, I'm pretty sure, but I've got two pieces in front of me that need resin too, so if I have extra, I'll be able to use it on those. So I'm gonna mix uh, two ounces. This is art resin, two part epoxy, and it's uh, uh, by measurement, not weight. Cold, but no snow. Our snow's gone now. So I'm gonna mix two ounces. I gotta go slow because this is like molasses. It's like one minute you think you don't have any and the next minute it's up to your elbows and it's not level. So let me move down here. So I'm gonna wait for it to catch up to itself. Oh Mary, you're braver than you think you are. Okay, I need one more little drop it's just resin. Whoa. And so I'm gonna set this one aside and then we'll get the hardener, two parts, and you're gonna pour two ounces of this as well for a total of four ounces. So what you're gonna do if you're new is pour two ounces in one cup of the hardener, two ounces of the resin in a separate cup so that you can ensure that your measurement is correct. There's a glare, I can't see. I think we're dead on. So that you don't uh, have a boo-boo. Okay, so I use this handy dandy. Uh, Gretchen, these came from, oh my gosh, my brain completely paint, uh, Paintstore.com, gosh, mm. I'll have to get back to you on that because my brain just died. <laughs> okay, so I use this little uh, makeup applicator, it's silicone to mix my resin because you can just wipe it right back off and use it a thousand times. Rima, are you here? Rima, I'm mixing. Catherine. So you have to mix this for three minutes. So what you're gonna do is stir, stir. You don't wanna like whip it to death. Paintstore.com, yes. You don't wanna beat it to death. You want to slowly stir for three minutes. Scrape your sides, scrape the bottom. Make sure you get all that cake mix in, the, in there. Yeah, you could probably get them from Amazon dot com or I mean Amazon or paintstore.com I think is the name of the place but they sell them all over the interweb and I when I'm doing a small piece I like to use these little baby cups so you can get you can get them just about anywhere yay for the timers well yeah Mary then you can do it we'll hold your hand you got this girl so we're gonna stir this for three minutes, but you're not gonna beat it to death, like I said. You're gonna stir it slowly so you don't incorporate a ton of air bubbles. And uh, you wanna make sure you're stirring or you're mixing and pouring your resin in a room temperature room. You don't want to be doing it outside where it's 20 or in your garage where it's 30. You wanna be in 70 degrees. Uh, my room up here is about 68. That's where I like to keep it. I'm pretty sure it's 168 right now. That's how I feel. Of course, that might be the menopause. So three minutes of stirring and it'll be the longest three minutes ever. Mary, you can do it. 
Yeah, these are awesome because I'm notorious for forgetting to wipe them off and then all you have to do is peel. Yes, if you get too many bubbles, the torch will get them out unless you have bazillions of them. If, you're, if you just whip your resin to death, thank you, Rima. If you whip your resin to death and if it's super cold, uh, cold will cause you to have more bubbles than normal and it is almost impossible to get those bubbles out. So make sure you're working in a nice warm room, room temperature, 70 degrees-ish, and that will help eliminate the bubble problem too. Joanne, I think this weekend is gonna be big move in. So we, a lot of the stuff is over there, which is why I'm having a hard time doing lives because it's like half my stuff is there, some stuff is still here, I'm all over the board. And uh, hopefully this weekend or, or within the next week, we're going to be moved in fully and working from the studio. And I'm really super excited about it. I really, really, really am. I work better. I work better that way. It's hard to work from home because it's like, I don't want to go upstairs. I want to sit on the sofa and watch Netflix. <laughs> I don't do well. Uh, this is a 10 by 10, Sharon. So we're time, Rima said it's time up. So I'm gonna start with, um, I'm trying to decide. Thought I brought some bubbles, but apparently I didn't. So we're just gonna move on since we have birds. Um, I'm gonna start with my glass and hey Samantha, again. And I'm gonna work left to right methodically so that I make sure all of my glasses covered nicely. So you don't wanna go like all over the place because then you're not sure exactly where, you, uh, where your um, epoxy landed. So you're gonna work left to right or right to left if, you're, if you so choose. Just kind of be methodical about your application. So I'm just gonna drizzle all the left side and I'm gonna work my way over to the right side. That way I know where all the glass that it all got touched. This is really gonna be pretty. I absolutely love the addition of the gold. You know, that was just a afterthought really, but I sure do like the addition of that. And I'm gonna show you it, show it to you really close up when we get to that point. And we'll take a really good picture too so you can see all that crackle. Super fun. I'm drizzly. Hey, Sonia, I'm glad you're here. So do your glass first, and I always do my glass first because the resin self-levels, and so you're actually putting a little more resin on than you think you are when you're applying it to the glass. So you can see, I don't know if you can see, but I'll show you before I start moving it, that the resin is seeping down through the top of the glass and it's pouring out the sides. So if you just do all of the flat part first and then do your glass, then you're using way more resin than you really need to because you have all the seepage down here at the bottom that you can use to spread out through the flat surface. So always try to do your glass first and then use whatever squeezes out of the glass to fill in your blank spaces and that'll help save you money and resin because we all like saving money. Resin is not cheap. So we teach you how to use it in a cost effective way because <laughs> I am a tightwad. I don't want to spend my money on resin. I'll spend my money on cowboy boots and beach trips. All right, 
So I wanna show you what I'm talking about. See, down at the bottom, I don't know if you can see right here where the resin has seeped away from the glass. It's kind of going down through all the layers of glass and it's leveling out. And it's so it's kind of seeping out right here from the glass. So you use that excess to fill in that bottom portion. And if you had done that bottom portion before you did the glass, then all you have done is added way more resin than you really needed to. So do your glass first. I'm gonna hit that edge. And then I'm going to spread it. You can use your hand or your tool to spread it out over the rest of your canvas. Make sure you have a little left for your sailboat. All right, so now it's all covered. So what I'm gonna do is take my sailboat. This is the, um, there's a big glare in there. This is the bottom of the boat. So I'm gonna just take some of this resin and I'm gonna cover the inside the concave side and the other side, the top side, and we'll add more as once we get it on there, but I want to make sure that's all covered with resin. Then I'm gonna tuck it in to the water. I want it a little off center, so that looks good. So we'll tuck that into the water. Now we're gonna do the same thing with our sailboat, or with our sail. Yes, it is pretty without it too, isn't it? The, the gold glass, I think, is the piece to resist on. I love the addition of the gold. Really kind of gave it a little extra something, didn't it? So that's the inside of the sail. And then we'll add a little to the outside. And this just helps, you know, if I'd put this glass down first and then just resined over the top, it wouldn't have got resin underneath the sail on my canvas and it wouldn't have gotten resin on the underside of that and it might not have a good seal. So doing it this way helps it uh, adhere really nicely to the um, canvas. So now what I'm gonna do is just take some of the excess and anywhere it's touching the canvas, I'm gonna add, oops, I'm gonna add a little more glass, I mean a little more resin, just to make sure it's all stuck down really nice. Okay, now, let me see. Now I need to add my seagulls, and my hands are a hot mess, so uh, I'm gonna try to be careful. I wanna pick and choose, these are my little seagull pieces. Let me tuck that under. Uh, it does make the glass stronger too, Betty, yes. So here is uh, a nice piece for a seagull, and you're just gonna make these, uh, attach these in a wide V, okay? So I'm gonna hold this up, try not to make a mess, so you can see the seagull. Can you see it, or is there too much glare? Can you see him? Yes, all it does is kind of distort the mirror, but I love the look of that. So there's our seagull. I'm trying to decide if I want to add more than one. Isn't he cute? Maybe I'll add, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add one over here. <laughs> and we're gonna cover him with resin too. We'll put one here. And a wide V, and then we're gonna put one teeny little baby one, wide V, over here. My old fat fingers are not helping. So, can you see those cute little seagulls? Is there too much glare? That's a lot of light, Stephen. Can you see those? So cute. So yeah, so we've added, I got a little resin from my hands on the side. 
So I've added one seagull on the left, two seagulls on the right. So cute. Oh, let me get these off. They're so doity. And then we're going to hit it with our torch. There we are. So I use a big old monster torch. You don't really have to use this. It's not 100% necessary. Um, you can use a creme brulee torch, a kitchen torch. You can use a heat gun. This is not necessary, but I do a lot of large pieces, so I don't like having to replace my torch all the time, and I've done countertops too, and it's just better to have a big one. But don't feel like you have to have this big monster. You can use a small to kitchen torch big time. So I'm gonna turn on my gas. About out, I can hear. Fire that up. Ooh, let's turn that flame down. And I'm just gonna hit the top, I can hear that it's out, almost out of gas. I'm gonna hit the top. What you wanna make sure you do is keep the flame of the torch, if you're using a torch, keep the flame off of your art piece. Don't touch it with the flame. And also keep the flame moving or keep the heat source moving at all times. You don't wanna stop. I'm gonna turn this off. So it's off now, but what you don't wanna do is stop and like hone in on one spot and just leave it there, okay? So you wanna keep your hand and your torch moving at all times so you don't burn your resin and you don't burn your canvas because it will happen quickly. Okay, so I used, let me grab a alcohol-based wipe and I use these to clean my silicone applicator. So I'm gonna clean that off real quick and then I'll tell you how much resin we used. Thank you, Teresa. I am such a beach girl. I could do beach art every day. Matter of fact, maybe we'll come back tomorrow and do beach art again. <laughs> I don't know. I could do beach art every single day. Okay, so we mixed four ounces of resin and I'm gonna say we used three of that. I have about an ounce left, maybe a smidge more. So I'm gonna say three ounces of resin for this piece. And I'm gonna show it to you up close a little. Can you see that? The light is hard. You gotta address that. So 